I recently switched from Mac to PC, and I got to tell you, I love it. I was actually really surprised when I first picked up my gaming PC, which is sitting right under this desk here. I was actually really surprised at how much I really just fell right into it. And I saw a meme recently on Twitter about when an Xbox or a PlayStation player switches to PC, and it's just an immediate... Like, no joke, that is literally how it feels to switch to PC. When you're used to playing on console, it makes such a difference when you come to PC, but obviously that's not the only reason that I switched. And really, for me, the biggest reason that I switched, which is kind of a crazy reason, is I.O. So I came from a MacBook Pro 14-inch M1 Pro model, and it has three Thunderbolt ports, a headphone jack, an HDMI, and it has an SD card reader reader, which is great. I mean, that is great IO, especially compared to the older MacBook Pros. But that being said, I'm using a Sony ZV-E10 right now to record this. I'm using a Shure MV7. I got two monitors and I have peripherals like a Logitech Craft keyboard and the MX Master 3S and things like that. And to connect to all of it and have it run smoothly, it was just a nightmare. The only way that I saw it being possible was with something like the CalDigit TS4, but I didn't see the need in buying a $400 Thunderbolt dock when I could just go to Best Buy, spend $400, and get a PC. And yes, honest to God, that was one of my biggest mistakes from a Windows buying perspective. I had no idea what I was buying, but I got to tell you, I'm using my Windows right now to record. Even though you see this window empty, I got OBS right over here. Take a look at this. I'm recording right here on OBS with no problem. I got a ton of stuff running in the background, and it's nice because even though though my Sony ZV-E10 is my camera, it really is like this computer is my recorder. And it's so nice to have, and it's exactly what I wanted with my Mac. I wanted to just be able to sit right here, turn on my ring light, and just click record. But that became such a chore with my Mac. And now that I'm on Windows, it's not. And I am sure there was ways to do it on Mac. I get it. But my experience running OBS and stuff on Mac OS just was not nearly as smooth as as it is here on PC. Yes, it's the same software, but with the IO situation, it was a big deal to me. It really was. Now, that being said, I do record the videos here on my Windows, but I still edit all of my videos on my Mac, and that may change soon. I've tried Adobe Premiere Pro. I actually just got a free trial. I was trying it out for a little bit. I tried DaVinci Resolve, which I do like, and I like that I can now get that on my iPad and stuff like that too. But that being said, I really love Final Cut Pro, and I think for that reason alone, I will still always be a Mac user at my heart. But I do love Windows, specifically Windows 11. I've never owned a Windows computer, like, ever. I mean, my parents used to have one way back in the day, but I don't really remember that. I think it was on, like, Windows Vista. <laughs> That's how old it was and stuff like that. I used to play, like, Polar Bowler, if you remember that or anything like that. But anyway, I'm finally here on Windows 11, and I've seen a lot of online controversy about it not being a good software and all that stuff. I actually like it. Coming from Mac, I think it is a really nice software. I enjoy it a lot, but I do see there's some controversy from like longtime Windows 10, Windows 8 users and things like that. I just like it. I think it's really great and I think there's a lot of nice features here that I do not like that I do not have on my Mac, but you know, there are a couple things that I miss about Mac going to PC because now everything is plugged in here. It's not so easy for me to just toss my laptop into this setup and put my laptop on these two monitors anymore. So the one thing that I really do miss from Mac OS having switched is gestures. So I actually do. I have right here, I have the magic key, uh, the magic trackpad, but you have to have it like manually plugged in to the PC if you want to use it. And if you don't, you can't use it wirelessly for some stupid reason. Like this thing only works with Mac unless someone knows about it and wants to let me know in the comments. I would love to be able to use this because going through my timeline, working in tools like Figma, which I use all the time 
and even trying to work on things like DaVinci Resolve and stuff like that. I just want to pinch the zoom. I want to scrub and all that stuff on gestures. And I can't do that on Windows. It's actually one of the biggest turn turning off points for me about Windows is that I can't really do that so easily unless this is plugged in. And given the distance with this Fazebo standing desk, it makes it pretty difficult to do that. So I wish we could find something to replace that or at least, you know, be able to use that. But that is certainly the biggest thing. And even with this MX Master 3S, I noticed things like scrubbing on the actual side wheel or using the pan feature and stuff like that is not even close to as smooth of an experience. And where this becomes really, really important to me is Figma or when I, I use Sketch on my Mac, which is for a design tool. But in Figma, I need those gestures. It's so much easier to pinch to zoom in on a vector that you're editing or something like that on a gesture-based touch input compared to a mouse. It really is. And yes, I understand that that's a learning curve thing because some people never even use gestures to use those softwares, but I do. I came from it and I absolutely loved it. So I think on that level, the reason you should switch to Windows ultimately depends on your workflow. For me, I wanted something that I could play games on, live stream on, and use as basically a recorder. And when I got this thing, like I said in the beginning, I know I could have bought a CalDigit TS4 for my MacBook Pro and get the same I.O. essentially that I do have on this computer instead of spending $400 on this computer and getting a, a 6500 XT graphics card, which was the dumbest decision I ever made. Um, and it, at, out of the box, this thing came with 8 gigs of RAM, which is supposed to be a game PC. By the way, this is the Lenovo Legion T5. Um, this one has the Ryzen 5 um, 5600G in it, which I will be upgrading in the future. I already updated the graphics card to the RTX 3050, and I wanted the 3060 Ti, but I really wanted something that would at least be able to run. I'm not like a pro gamer, so I was like, you know what? I could save a couple of bucks just going to the 3050, and it's really all I need. And honestly, it is all I need. I don't need anything else. Anything over that for me is overkill personally, but I do plan to upgrade down the road, just not now. I don't see the need at this very moment. But back to what I was saying, it really depends on your use case. If you want to get a PC so you could be able to live stream and play games, by all means, get a PC. You are going to step over the garden and be like, I get it. Even when I had the 6500 XT in here, I still liked gaming on this. It was very hard to game on it. I was trying to play games like Rust on this computer on the 6500 XT, and it just like didn't work. Um, the 3050 is handling it pretty well, which is good, and that's all I care about. I care about like the big games. If they handle fine on the 3050, I don't care because I'm not some enthusiast that needs like the 4080 just to be satisfied. I don't. I don't care. I just want something that works for me. I upgraded the RAM. I upgraded the graphics graphics card. I'm very happy with it, to be completely honest with you. So I think that's what's important to realize is what is your use case? Because I really think a PC could handle everything your Mac could. The only thing I will say is Mac is prettier. Mac works better for graphic designers because certain tools like Sketch just work better on there. And overall, it just is kind of a nice walled garden when you have iMessage and things like that, which, you know, I forgot to mention. I, I do want to point that out. When I switched to Windows, my biggest concern was being able to airdrop because in my web design business where I'm constantly building websites for clients and I need to airdrop stuff to my computer that I pulled from my phone, especially, and here's a prime example, for YouTube video thumbnails, when I am manipulating a photo, like here, if I went to go here and like this is a horrible selfie, but if I went to go do this and share it where it just pulls out without me having to go into Adobe Photoshop and manually crop out someone for like a YouTube thumbnail or something. I just go to my phone, tap the person and airdrop it to my Mac. That's what I used to do. I was really concerned about not being able to do that here on a Windows, but it's actually really simple. All you need to do is get the OneDrive app and literally when you go to share, when you're in the share sheet after you do that, you just go over to the OneDrive app right here and it does literally the same thing. It takes one extra click. So what? That's not that big of a deal, but it functions nearly identically. So I was concerned about not having airdrop, but that solution is just as easy for me. I don't find myself actively missing it, even though it would certainly be amazing if it was there. It's not the end of the world that it isn't. And if that's one of your reasons for holding back, you shouldn't worry about it because there are options to explore. 
for sure. Now, iMessage not being on Mac, yeah, for some people that kind of sucks. FaceTime on Mac, that kind of, or FaceTime not being on Windows, that kind of sucks. But honestly, it's not that big of a deal. I don't find myself actively missing those things, and I think you could get by without it. So, wanted to make this quick video talking about my experience switching to Windows from a Mac, and it's going a lot better than I thought it was. I really like it. Does that mean I am going to be Windows forever? Absolutely not. Like, no, I still love my MacBook. I still have plenty of use for my MacBook, especially when I'm out traveling. But for a desktop experience, Windows, in my opinion, is better. I will, for now on, only have a Windows as my desktop. That's for sure. You, you better believe that. But for on-the-go portability and for a powerhouse laptop, my MacBook Pro M1 Pro is not going anywhere. I will still be using that every day. I, I'm going to use it to edit this video, even though I want to try DaVinci Resolve and things like that. I just love Final Cut Pro. My um, my packages and things like that for um, plugins and stuff like that for Final Cut Pro all are built in there already. It's going to be hard for me to leave it. That being said, I do see a future where I use this more for video editing and things like that. And you absolutely can if you're used to tools like Premiere Pro and things like that. I'm just not. I love Final Cut. It's going to be hard to make the switch because I just I think it's a great software. Anyway, wanted to make this quick video. Hopefully this helped you in some way, shape, or form get an idea of whether you should switch from Mac to Windows or Windows to Mac. Um, they're honestly very similar operating systems other than the walled garden that Apple has and a couple little things, but for the most part, it's not as hard of a switch, and I really do like it. So with that out of the way, thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know your thoughts as well Is if you recently uh, made a switch as well. I would love to hear your input, so make sure we comment down below. Let's stay healthy down there and all of that stuff. But with that out of the way, thank you so much for watching this video, and until the next one, I'll talk to you later. Peace out.